So Kiss Me Deadly opens on a woman's feet. She's running barefoot down the road and we can tell it's night time. She seems to only be wearing a trench coat, and if she is wearing other clothes they're obscured. This is hermeneutic code as it leads the audience into a number of questions that aren't immediately answered. Who is this woman? Why is she running barefoot down the road at night? <laughs> Cut to the face of the woman running, and then moves to a long shot to show that she's on a road with a field on either side. This tells the audience that she's in the middle of nowhere, or at least with no immediate civilization. As she runs up to the camera, the music comes in urgently, and is played on brass. It becomes louder when she is running to build suspense. <laughs> watches a car drive past and keeps checking around. She tries to wave down more cars but gets ignored. Out of breath she sees another car coming towards her, and out of desperation she stands in the path of the car. This is prioritic code, as the audience fears for the unknown woman's life. It forces the audience to wonder why she is so desperate to get a ride that she'll put her own life in danger. It also generates some degree of sympathy, because we now know that she is clearly in a lot of danger. <laughs> The driver of the car swerves off to the side of the road. He looks up to the woman and he says, You almost wrecked my car. She doesn't say anything well, back. You can tell that he's annoyed, but you can also see that he knows something is wrong and he wants to help. As the woman goes around the car to get in, the radio presenter says, Now, fellas, we'll hear that fine new platter by Nat King Cole. This is diegetic sound as it's being played through the car speakers. As the credits appear in front of the car, we can see that they are in fact rolling backwards. There's something so strange and ominous, so fundamentally wrong about the way that the credits roll, Right off the bat, everything about Kiss Me Deadly already feels unsafe. So how does Kiss Me Deadly fit in with the codes and conventions of film noir? High and low angles? Sort of. Not really, though. Extreme close-ups? Yep. Deep focus? No. Rain on damp streets? No. Chiaroscuro lighting? Yep. High contrast images, yep. Urban locations, yeah. So, it follows quite a few of them. Okay, so next up is Memento. I apologise for the awful quality of this video and the fact that it's also not complete, but it was the best one I could find, so here we go. Simple blue text appears in a black background for the opening credit sequence of this film. It's a very simple opening with a simple but strong soundtrack behind it. The words Memento appear obscuring the view of a man holding a Polaroid picture. It is unclear what it was initially of, but that's soon revealed. Once again, this is hermeneutic code, as the audience is immediately questioning what is that picture of, and is that blood? As the man shakes the photo, it appears as if he is overexposing the photo, when actually we soon realise the clip is being played backwards. Jump forwards a bit, we're able to deduce this as the man slots the photo back into the camera. We see that he's moving in a very unnatural way, and we can also see a shot of the blood flowing backwards along the floor. And if all of that wasn't enough for you, he also appears to will his gun off the floor using the force. So by this point we know that this man has murdered somebody, but as an audience we are unsure as to why he's so calm about it. There is only one bit of dialogue in this opening scene. What? The theme of the opening to Memento is hermeneutic code. Why is there blood? Why does he have a gun? Why has he murdered this person, and why did he stop to take a photo? It is also deceptively simple, as although the scene being played backwards is effective, it is also easy to achieve. So how does Memento fare up to the codes and conventions of film noir? It uses high and low angles, has extreme close-ups, uses deep focus, however there is no use of rain on damp streets, there is a use of chiaroscuro lighting, there is no use of high contrast, and it is in an urban location. 
The first shot of Killing Them Softly is of an open exit or space from inside a pitch black tunnel. Litter is flying past the gap. America! There is a man who walks silhouetted up to the exit and out into the light, while the non diegetic sound is of Obama giving a speech to America. The entire scene is sporadically interrupted by the opening credits, which immediately cues you into the fact that you are watching something that is working on its own distinctive rhythm. This is a very jarring and uncomfortable experience for the audience, which immediately sets the film apart. That pushes us forward. The American promise alive. The man's body language when we finally see him from a side profile is hunched over, and he has a cigarette in his mouth. The man walks and two large posters in the background of Obama and McCain are revealed. Both posters suggest a change to a better America. The politics paired with the shot of the derelict scene suggest that the film will be some sort of social commentary. Killing Them Softly only follows a few of the classic conventions of film noir. It does use high and low angles, deep focus and urban locations, but it doesn't use extreme close-ups, rain on damp streets, chiaroscuro lighting or high contrast images. Brick opens with soft music that plays over the title credits. camera pans through an alleyway and towards someone's feet, and then pulls focus into an extreme close-up of his face, revealing very little about his character, only that he wears glasses. Cut to a master shot, and we can now see there is another character lying on the floor, presumably dead. In this shot we see more of the first character, but his face is still partially obscured. A shot-reverse shot between the dead girl and the first character may suggest that they have some sort of connection, or he at least knows who she is. A shot of the girl's arm is revealed and it's shown that she wears bracelets. This is to identify her later in the film. Here she is being identified later in the film, alive and well. We can assume that this was a time jump. Simple credits match a simple opening. Brick follows many of the codes and conventions of film noir. It uses high and low angles, extreme close-ups, deep focus, rain on damp streets and urban locations. However, it does not include chiaroscuro lighting or high contrast images. Start with complete black, the sound of a police siren and the opening note of a sombre jazz song. Using just sound creates an atmosphere of mystery. The first image of the scene is a woman walking towards the edge of a balcony, overlooking a city. Everything is in black and white except the woman's red dress. Red has connotations of lust, anger and danger, suggesting the woman herself embodies these things in the scene. The dress itself is backless, provocative, but is also elegant and expensive. This makes her look classy. She shivers in the wind like the last leaf on a dying tree. A man's voice is heard loudly, well spoken and calm. The idea of death is introduced in the metaphor of a dying tree. The fact the woman is the last leaf suggests that her days are numbered. The man appears to have all the control in this scene as he approaches the woman. The lighting in this scene is always partially or fully obscuring the character's faces or main facial features. The man usually has a semi-eclipsed face, possibly showing his split morality, or the two ways in which the audience view him in this scene, as a lover, then a killer. I didn't come here for the party. I came here for you. I've watched you for days. You're everything a man could ever want. It's not just your face, your figure. As the man moves through his complimentary script, he refers to her eyes and they flash green. This could show that she is jealous of the fantasy she has created for herself and wishes it were true. What is it you see in my eyes? I see a crazy calm. You're sick of running. The man starts to say things that have some effect on the woman, and her face darkens as the gravity of her situation dawns on her. 
She knows what will happen next. I don't want to face it alone. When she turns to kiss him, the rain starts. This seems like pathetic fallacy, showing the sombre nature of the scene and the fact that the woman is about to die. With the kiss, the scene turns into a fully black and white comic book version of itself. The man and the woman who are shown in long shot in the centre. He is straight-backed and much taller than the woman who is leaning in. So that I'll save her from whatever she's scared of and take her far, far away. I tell her. I love her. The gunshot is a sharp interruption in this seemingly emotional scene. A high angle shot shows the man holding the woman as she dies in the rain. All the questions as to who the man was and why he killed her are answered by the last bit of dialogue. I'll cash your check in the morning. The opening to Sin City uses all of the codes of conventions that we have been looking at in film noir. It uses high and low angles, extreme close-ups, deep focus, rain and damp streets, chiaroscuro lighting, high contrast images, and a 